Kuro Pekka was a unique and tricky monster. Its most notable ability is to call other monsters for help. This includes large monsters. Its mucus can lower your fire resistance, which is bad since it also has fire attacks. On top of that, it can buff itself and the monsters it calls, just as a hunting horn user can buff other hunters. If you've been following along, you should have farmed for the Great Jaggy Armor set. While this is a very good set at this point in the game, it also has negative 20 in fire resistance. If you're having trouble taking too much damage from Kurapiko's fire attacks, consider switching to the Bone Armor instead. It has decent defense and fire resistance, and can be bought from the weapon and armor shop next to the smithy. I will also be using the Hunting Horn for this fight, both for its useful song to prevent bouncing, as well as this being a monster you should probably farm for if you want to use the Hunting Horn in the early game. It also takes a lot of damage from impact to its head, which can be hit somewhat consistently with some practice. Kurupeka's peck attack is very similar to other bird wyvern pecks. It does a bit of a funny run-up before doing it. You can be hit by this running move. I call it the Plesioth run, since it's similar to a run that Plesioth does. Note that it does not have to do the peck move after it. Another common attack it can do is the tail spin. This can be very hard to avoid if you don't position yourself properly. From what I can tell, it will always do it in a clockwise direction, and, like other monsters, always twice in a row. Another thing you may find it do is a flyback. This is a sort of reset for the monster. If you are too close to it when it does it, you'll be staggered by the wind it kicks up. When enraged, it may do this faster and I believe the landing would do damage if it hit you. It can also do a flying bite attack, though this may be uncommon. Another common attack you'll see is Kurapeku using its wings to make small explosions. You can follow this up with a flyback. There are a few variations. You'll usually see him do the two-hit fire attack. You'll notice he struck his wings together two times before lunging twice. It's important to know when the attack will end so you can position properly, if not to attack him, to use an item, or do some other action. Think of Monster Hunter a little like a turn-based game. If you try and act out of turn, you will get punished and damaged for it. Here is a three-hit fire attack. You'll notice the pattern at the start is different, and he strikes his wings three times. Apparently this indicator wasn't present in Monster Hunter Tri. Pay attention to the habits of the monster you're hunting. And finally there's the fast fire hit. Along with taking your turn and noticing monster habits, you need to learn how to sometimes anticipate monster attacks. This attack is too fast to reasonably react to, so you should anticipate when it will do it. There's a few things to keep in mind. Let's talk about monster states for a second. As you can see here, Kuropeko is in the middle of an attack. Understand that in normal circumstances, once a monster starts an attack, it cannot do anything else until it has finished that attack. Now that it has finished its current attack, it will choose a new action. In most cases, this will be one of two things. 1. Immediately attack again. 2. Turn towards you first and then attack. It may do some other things, like start to run away or go to eat, etc. That will all depend on the monster and the current game state. Notice here that Kurapeko turned towards me. Also, very important, notice where I was when he started to turn towards me. In normal circumstances, a monster will decide what move to do before turning, and once it started turning, that move has already been selected. Since I was very close to him, that unlocks his ability to use the fast fire attack, and so I need to anticipate that and make a decision. You can gamble and keep attacking, or slightly reposition and keep attacking, or run away and reposition like I did here. These decisions all depend on the current game state. That is, your health, your weapon, your sharpness, the monster's current state, your allies, your items, etc. Keep things simple for now. Do you want to be hit? If not, play it safe. And as always, do not stand in front of the monster. Kuropeko's spit doesn't do much damage, but it will debuff you with negative fire resistance. If you're using the Jaggy Armor set, this will make his fire attacks even more dangerous. Depending on your position relative to him, he may do this attack a lot.
When facing a new monster and or a new attack, try and understand the properties of it. In this case, you should notice that the spitting attack will always land on the right side of him. Notice how I use directions relative to the monster. The spitting attack can have a deceptively long range. Keep in mind it aims at where you were when it started. To avoid this attack consistently, just stay on its left side until it finishes. When Kurapeko does a flyback, it can also do some spinning attacks before it lands. If you stagger Kurapeko while it's flying, it will fall down. And finally, of course, it can call for help and buff itself and other monsters. This won't be too terribly helpful until you learn them, but it will mimic the sound of the monster it's calling. In this case, it's Arjuros. It can call for help from large and small monsters. Notice here when the Kuropeko sweeps from his left side, that's a large monster call. And if it doesn't do that, it's calling small monsters. So this is Jaggy, not Great Jaggy. If you break its beak, When it calls for help or tries to buff, it will take longer. You can use this extra time to try and attack it and interrupt the call or buff. Alternatively, use this time to use an item, sharpen, etc. Staggering it while it's singing will interrupt it. Notably, if you use a sonic bomb while it's singing, that will also interrupt it. Sonic Bombs are very useful when fighting Kuropeko. If it is singing a buff, staggering it will transfer the buff to your hunting team instead. It will play this special animation if you are successful. Note that if you use a Sonic Bomb to interrupt a buff song, it will not transfer the buff. We are given Sonic and Dung Bombs for this hunt. Sonic Bombs can interrupt Kurapeko's songs, and Dung Bombs can repel large monsters that it calls. If this is your first time fighting Kurapeko, you will get a cutscene in Area 9, and Kurapeko will run to Area 7. Otherwise, you'll probably first find him in Area 6. If not there, check 7. Now that we've found Kurapeko, be sure to use a paintball on it. For monsters that fly away, paintballs are a lot less optional. Though, keep in mind, you can find out generally where a monster is headed by tracking their shadow as they leave the area. If Kurapeko is calling a large monster and its beak isn't broken yet, be sure to use a sonic bomb to prevent it successfully calling one. In this area, it seems to like calling Maylinks, which are black fur felines that will steal items from you. You may want to prevent it calling them as well. Of course, if you are using Hunting Horn, Make sure you're doing hunting horn things, like doing the white white buff, and whatever else your horn does that's helpful. In my case, white red red will give me an attack buff, so I want to keep it up as much as I can. Remember that playing songs twice will often increase their effects. When a Kurapeko lands or flies backwards, it will create a wind pressure. Be sure to attack through it if your weapon has attacks that resist it. Being staggered for even a second could mean death.
Your main goal for the first half of the fight should be to break its beak. Make sure to use traps if that would help. Breaking his beak will give you more time to stop him from singing and making things more difficult for you. Kurapeka was drooling, which tells us that it's tired. A tired monster is slower, less aggressive. Hunting tools like flash bombs and traps are more effective now as well. Use them if you got them. Tired monsters will also usually have some moves disabled, usually projectile ones. Try and learn which ones, if any, are removed when a monster is tired. Some attacks also change when they're tired, such as a charge attack here causing Kurapeka to fall down. Try and predict where the part of the monster that you want to hit will be when your weapon swings towards it. It'll take practice to get more accurate. Kurapeka does a little victory dance if it successfully tricks a monster into coming to its aid. Keep watch for this, as it can tell you when another large monster has entered the area. If you are dealing with two large monsters at once, you should consider using a dung bomb to get one of them to leave. Don't always use it on the new monster, however. Experiment with both options. Keep in mind that dung bombs take some time to get the monster to run away, which apparently changes from monster to monster. Stay alert until they're gone. If you ever set on fire, try and see if there's any water in the area. To put out the fire, you need to roll several times, but if there's water, you just need to roll once to put it out. When in a predicament, it's important to remain calm. Don't make panic decisions. Identify the proper course of action and the safest way to achieve that. When at low health, your main priority should be to fall back and find an opening to heal. Possibly consider leaving the area to do so. All of your actions should be deliberate. Even sheathing your weapon can leave you vulnerable. I was a little rushed on healing and most of the health I got back was lost again. When a monster is in a tight spot, it's better for them than it is for you. You need a room to move around, so you should almost never fight them in an area where you can't. Fortunately, monsters usually like to fight you up close, so if you run from them, they tend to follow. And our good friend Mr. Boldrum is back. What a fucking asshole.
Oof, ouch, owie. My bones. Bone hurting charge. Kurapeko successfully did a healing song. We can tell because the color of it was green. There are also damage, armor, and stamina songs. Kuropeko just chose a move, in this case, to fly over to me. Notice how it flew to where I just was? Use these things to your advantage. finally broke the beak. This isn't a perfect hunt by any means, but I think it's good to show all the same. Firstly, I'm just kind of busy, it's hard to work on these things and also take care of things in my life, but also, I like showing that I'm not perfect, in hopes that you don't feel the need to be perfect yourself. I'd like to think that I'm good at least, but yeah, don't be discouraged by others' skill. Try and be encouraged by your own improvement. Whoopsies. Notice the buff icon next to my name. It's not shifting between the note, self-improvement, and a sword, the damage buff. This tells me that I don't have my damage buff active, so I'm trying to get it back. That's a special fire attack in which it fails, because Kuropeko is tired. I'm not sure the properties of it off the top of my head, whether or not it'll actually hit you. Kuropeko is now limping. If I had traps and tranks, I could capture it, but I don't have to. Here, I saw the flyback coming and wanted to do some sort of attack so I didn't get staggered by the wind. Ugh, I'm just a gamer like that. Owie. When Kuropeko flies backwards like that, it usually means he's gonna land. And there we have it. Kuropeko is a trickster, that's his title, so don't be too surprised if he catches you off guard. If you're having trouble, don't be ashamed. Each new fight is usually a step up in difficulty, but the more you persevere, the better you'll get. The Kuropeko armor set is pretty good if you are a hunting horn player, as Maestro is practically essential. You can get Monster Bone M's from Kuropeko, but also from Renoplus, the charging small monsters in the Sandy Plains, though it may take you some attempts before you even get one. Remember that the items and equipment I'm bringing are just examples. You should feel free to experiment and deviate from my recommendations. 
I bring minimal loadouts to show what can be done with them. But if you want to bring a full stack of sonic and dung bombs, you'll probably have a better time. Don't forget your palicos too. Above all else, take your time, and be patient with yourself. If you need to, take a break and come back and try again. Don't give up. You got this. Until next time.